69-year-old Mirta Venegas shows us the room she's prepared for her next guests. In February, she decided to bet on the relaxation of U.S.-Cuban ties by refurbishing and renting the room on Airbnb, mainly to a wave of American visitors, a wave U.S. President Donald Trump is stopping. I'm a retiree who depends on this because my pension is tiny. It's an honest way of making a living that's helped me enormously. All over Cuba, people have benefited from setting up restaurants or renting rooms, apartments and houses. People like Caridad Gonzalez, who has been able to renovate her family's once dilapidated home. The Cuban people were so excited when President Obama came. We thought our lives would improve, and with tourism they did. But now we're being blocked again, because it's the people who suffer the consequences, not the Cuban state. Cubans watched somber-faced as President Donald Trump said that easing restrictions on trade and travel only helps the Castro regime. Trump says he wants U.S. dollars to go only to the fledgling private sector. But the overwhelming majority of the Cuban economy is controlled by the government, in fact up to 65 percent by the military, which means that any attempt to try to punish the state sector will have an impact on ordinary Cubans that work in places like these. The announcement also impacts Americans here on what's called a people-to-people -people license, which will now no longer exist. I'm devastated. <laughs> it's a tragedy. Yeah. It's really a tragedy. Yeah. This has been, everybody is so kind here. It's gracious. It's, I don't understand. But for millions of Cubans who've seen bilateral relations improve and then revert before, Trump's announcement is less of a surprise than a confirmation of just how difficult it is to bet on a stable policy from the United States. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Havana.